Hey everyone, this is Dan with DPS Breakdowns. In today's video, we're going to study a move called the Funk Roll, which has become an increasingly popular way to defend against takedowns at the higher levels. We'll accomplish this by looking at a wrestler named Jesse Delgado, a two-time NCAA champion out of the University of Illinois, who was particularly effective at using this move. What is Funk? Funk is a style of wrestling. Its characteristics include the ability to score, or at least neutralize, an opponent's offensive attacks from what would be considered traditionally disadvantageous positions. The ability to both force and win unorthodox scrambling sequences, and a reliance on creativity and improvisation, paired with an understanding of specific positions and important concepts. One of the most common methods of funk is a move called the funk roll. The funk roll is a defensive movement that has three objectives. The first objective is to disrupt the opponent's base. This can be accomplished with a combination of momentum, usually through a forward or sideways roll, and hip or ankle control. The second objective is to both prevent the opponent from regaining base, while simultaneously building up your own base. Elevating the opponent's feet off the mat and the use of elbow and hand posts help to accomplish this. The third objective is to either score or force a stalemate. Let's look at some film to illustrate these objectives. Here we see Delgado counter his opponent's takedown attempts by using forward and sideways rolls combined with hip and ankle control. The offensive wrestlers want to maintain strong positioning on their knees or feet and with their heads upright, but this combination of momentum and lower body control takes them out of position. This helps accomplish the first objective, base disruption. Next, let's observe how Delgado uses elevation and arm posts to continue disrupting his opponent's bases while building up his own. The concept of elevation is a crucial component of both the funk roll and scrambling in general. If you can keep an opponent's foot elevated off the mat, it is extremely difficult for him to build his base back up to the feet, where he is in the strongest position to finish the takedown. The third and final objective of the funk roll is to either score or force a stalemate. It's important to understand that the funk roll, like other types of funk moves, is a dynamic movement that will often elicit different responses from opponents in different situations. Although certain patterns will become recognizable as you gain more experience with the movement, the use of improvisation and creativity will help to open up scoring opportunities, such as a cradle as seen here. Keep in mind that a funk roll that ends in a stalemate is not a bad outcome, considering that the offensive opponent was initially in a strong position to score a takedown. One thing you'll notice in higher level matches is that offensive opponents who are countered with a funk roll will sometimes start employing their own funk methods. This resulting battle for base, as we call it, will often result in a stalemate or a potentially dangerous call due to twisted knees or spines. Let's take a closer look at some funk roll sequences. Here, we have an offensive wrestler in on a single leg. Delgado's immediate reaction is to begin diving over his opponent's back, looking to gain hip control. Note that Delgado looks to control the hip on the same side as his opponent's single leg, rather than across the body. Delgado will drive off of his left leg to help generate momentum for the roll. The momentum of the roll, along with the hip control, help to disrupt the offensive wrestler's base. A good indication that an offensive wrestler's base has been disrupted is when he is forced to post a hand to the mat for support. Here you can see that Delgado is beginning the process of elevating his opponent's right ankle off the mat. Here, I want to draw your attention to Delgado's hands. Pay attention to the way he transfers the controlled ankle from his right hand to his left. This is significant because it will free up his right arm and allow him to come up onto the elbow post. Notice how he maintains the elevation of the right ankle throughout this process. From here, Delgado upgrades the elbow post to a hand post and uses it to build his base up to the knees. With his base now built to the knees and his opponent's ankle still elevated off the mat, Delgado is no longer at risk of being taken down. In fact, 
he's now in position to turn the tables and score points of his own. This sequence is a good example of how a funk roll can create unorthodox and possibly even unique scrambling sequences. With the opponent insisting on controlling Delgado's left leg, Delgado craftily brings his opponent's knee next to his head and locks in the cradle. The beauty of funk is that even elite level competitors can be caught off guard in these unusual positions. Let's see the entire sequence one more time. Remember the objectives. The first is to disrupt the opponent's base with momentum and hip and ankle control. The second is to maintain this disruption through the use of elevation while building up your own base. The third is to score or force a stalemate. In this sequence, the opponent is again in on a single leg. As the opponent builds his base to the feet, Delgado performs a forward roll while wrapping his arms around his opponent's right knee. Curled up on a ball with his hips in the air and his knees in his chest, Delgado will be able to generate a great deal of momentum by kicking his legs forward. Look at the effect this kicking motion has on his opponent's base. Again, Delgado will look to elevate one of his opponent's ankles while building up his own base with an elbow post. Delgado crosses his opponent's ankles, making it extremely difficult for him to regain his base. The result is a stalemate. Here, the opponent performs a slide by to a low single. Delgado immediately looks to obtain ankle control on the same side that his opponent is controlling his leg. Delgado performs a sideways roll and right away looks to both elevate his opponent's ankle and build up to the elbow post. As the opponent kicks his free leg to the other side, the elevation of his right leg forces him down to a hip. You'll notice that the opponent maintains his own elevation on Delgado's leg. This resulting battle for base leads to a stalemate. Here we have a straight ankle pick to a misdirection single leg. Instead of rolling, Delgado changes the angle and tripods over his opponent's base while controlling his opponent's right leg. Notice how the opponent is now based on his right hip rather than on his knees. We see again the combination of elevating the opponent's ankle off the mat with the elbow post. We'll also see again the method of transferring the ankle control to the other arm in order to build up the elbow and hand posts to the other side. The ankle transfer is crucial because in a given situation, building up your base towards one side will often be easier than building up to the other side. Look at how this sequence of events has put the offensive wrestler in defensive mode. The wrestler who has more familiarity with these types of funky scrambles will have a big advantage at this point. As with many of these sequences, this one ends up in a goofy looking entanglement with a striking resemblance to a pro wrestling Boston Crab. This time we have a double leg takedown. Before Delgado's hips even hit the mat, he is already wrapping his opponent's leg in preparation for the funk roll. Two factors that can improve the likelihood of success of a funk roll are using an opponent's momentum against them and initiating the roll before they solidify a dominant position. Here we see Delgado perform a sideways roll while beginning to elevate his opponent's ankle. But look at how the opponent grabs his own form of hip control with a weave grip between Delgado's legs. This grip allows the opponent to control both of Delgado's legs and prevent him from squaring his hips to the mat with a single arm. Because the opponent only needs one hand to control both of Delgado's legs, he can use his other arm to begin building his base back up to the feet. The opponent's weave grip completely shuts down Delgado's attempts to build up his own base. Despite this, Delgado still has his own form of ankle control, which he uses to bring his opponent back to the mat. The opponent does a good job of maintaining his weave grip, but he can no longer get back to both feet with Delgado elevating his right ankle off the mat. For this single leg, notice again how early Delgado begins looking for lower body control. 
Because it would be very difficult to build his base by turning inward, Delgado will transfer the ankle control from his right arm to his left. This will allow him to build up to his right elbow in the outward facing direction. At this point, both wrestlers are controlling one of their opponent's ankles. Observe how Delgado uses his right leg to block his opponent's free ankle, which he then grabs. Delgado relinquishes his double ankle control to get behind his opponent, but the opponent continues to maintain his own form of elevation. Unable to get his left foot to the mat, Delgado lacks the power to finish the takedown. After all that action, no points are scored and a stalemate is called. Let's see that sequence one more time. That concludes today's video. Please let me know what you think in the comments below, and be sure to like and share the video if you found it useful. One other thing, be sure to check out my community tab on YouTube for short GIF breakdowns. Thanks everyone.